Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. I've got a quick little game for you today. I don't have a whole lot of time over the next couple of days to cast. I do have some more content coming out later in the week, but I'm a little pressed for time today, so we're going to tackle a short little one versus one just so I can get you out your Thursday video like it always comes out. Uh, the map is Balvery Mountains, and I think this is the smallest map second to Veil of Isis. Veil of Isis is the little cutout map that is the center of Fields of Isis, and it's like two kilometers by two kilometers. And this map, I think, is maybe three by three actual land size. So it's very, very small. The players are no joke. It's no joke and super ass. I did not choose this replay strictly based on the names but the names are great you are free to make as many puns and jokes as you like in the comments and i will read them and laugh hysterically later on moving on from that this is a seraphim versus cybern red versus blue match on the ladder 1083 for no joke 976 for super that is a pretty close rank range but do remember that that is not indicative of multiplayer rank these guys could be anywhere between 800 and like 1600 multiplayer and I have no idea what their rank is. Probably should have looked it up at some point. Um, so we've got a highly aggressive expansion build from Super. Whether or not he is going to actually dive into an aggressive stance combat wise is yet to be determined, but he threw down a single factory, P-Gen, not even a mass extractor, and immediately began building T1 mobile artillery, which means I think he is going to go for an early base base kill possibly an early ACU kill there is a mantis coming out for no joke he's got a little bit of combat presence as well second mantis coming out he built three engineers running out to drop the hydro ACU moving to the front this is a pretty standard build for this type of map this is highly unusual and I am eager to see how it works out the ACUs have engaged at the two minute mark, which is a record as far as I'm concerned. T1 Mobile Artillery landing a couple of good strikes on No Joke's Commander, and the fire exchange continues. If I were No Joke, I would actually back up just a teeny tiny little bit and start laying down some fire on these incoming artillery, because when you do that much combat build that early in the game, eventually you will run dry of resources. And if you can stop that initial push and trap the ACU on your side of the map, Sometimes you can do really, really well for yourself as far as an early kill goes. But this is not looking good for No Joke. He's standing still under fire, although there's going to be a little bit of collateral damage on that ACU with a couple of shots. And pushing the Mantis up to try and kill off all these artillery. He's got to keep this stuff from reaching his base. So far, No Joke taking far, far more damage, twice as much damage as Super has. And those artillery are finally going to go down. Along the bottom side here, we do have a Mantis and Scout pair pushing over to the left. Still a little bit of aggression from No Joke, even though he is hard-pressed in his base. Thankfully, he does have the Hydra up. He's got a point defense, so should the ACU wander too far in that direction, there shouldn't be any overcharge yet. Nope, there is not. So he will not be able to deal with that point defense without taking irreparable damage. And so he will be denied access to this area. Um... The power generator is not a bad loss because of that Hydra, so no stalls in No Joke's future. He's actually got identical power income to Super at this point, although he has half the mass income due to only having half the mechs. Another wave of T1 artillery moving in on the left, No Joke taking a lot of damage actually. 2100 health and falling. I think Super could actually kill that ACU if he were to stay in the fight. If he just stayed in engagement range, he's got 6,600 health versus 2,300. More than enough to survive that nuke once he landed the damage <clears throat> Excuse me, on that commander. The longer he leaves it, the worse off it's going to be for him because of that aggressive Cybern regen. 17 health per tick regen versus 10. Almost double. So that means we've got uh, around 4,000 health to full health on this ACU and about six, 7,000 health to full health on this ACU. So by the time he gets to full health on regen, no joke will be damn near there himself thanks to that 17 regen. That's the cool thing about the Cybern ACU. You start 1,100, 1,200 health in the hole versus the other ACUs, but you're much more able to jump back into combat once you take that damage because you regen so quickly. All right, re, uh, resources getting built back up. We've got the mass extractors getting rebuilt. 
that five income is painful to look at, but thankfully there are a couple of tank wrecks around if he were to drop an engineer on them. I imagine we're going to see a horrific stall here. Yes, we are. 16, 12 in the hole. Super is fairly well balanced here. He's going to need some power soon. He's got an air factory. Ah, that is what's draining his power. If he's, well, no, it's building engineers. If he tries to build an air unit, that is going to be catastrophic for his eco. He's already got a bomber out. Thankfully, he is not building any more air. That T1 bomber is going to lay down a little bit of damage here on that mass extractor and then immediately wing over the civilian anti-air defense. Everyone hates aggressive civs. Most of the time they get in the way. A lot of the time you have to kill them to accomplish what you need to get done. But you know, every once in a while, they're highly, highly useful. And ladies and gents, we just saw one of those cases. I always love it when I see a T1 bomber coming across the map and someone forgot that there was a civilian anti-air emplacement right there. And so the bomber dies on the way to the base. And it is freaking hysterical. The Mantis did get a mass extractor and engineer kill on the left. I did not zoom in on it. But uh, four Thams are going to push it out of position and kill it deader than a doornail. It is no longer with us. No joke. Wandering towards the south. 4,500 health on that ACU versus 8,000. Catching up rather rapidly. And Thams starting to clump up once again. Actually, Super does have more tanks on the field. Or no joke has more tanks on the field than Super. Got my names backwards there. Quite the impressive little feat, and he does have a nice little clump of anti-air units there guarding the middle of the base just in case there were to be another bomber coming out of that factory. Balvery Mountains is an interesting map. It's got water up here. You can actually build navy if you want to, but I don't think I've ever seen navy from this rank range, although it's been a while since I've watched a game on this map. Um, typically, you see Navy only in extremely high-rated players trolling each other and in extremely low-rated players being clueless. The mid-ranks, I don't see much Navy on maps like this. It is possible to drop a cruiser in the water, though, and rain fire and destruction down upon your enemy's base should you take the gamble on wasting all of that mass. Nice little engagement here in the center. No joke is going to knock out quite a few tanks with his ACU actually pushing up on 11 kills with it. That is nice veteran C potential later on, gaining him yet more regen and more health. If I were him though, I would sit on top of that and reclaim it. Reclaim with all I've got. 1300 in the bag for super with... That has got to be reclaim income. It says 65 for tick, but that cannot be right. 16, that looks more like it. No joke, with 9 income, sitting on 1,200 reclaims. So just about the same. And if events keep on the way that they are going now, no joke will quickly surpass Super in reclaim value because he has been pushing Super back and reclaiming as he comes out. You can see there's no artillery wrecks left, none of that stuff. Nice little engagement down here. These Mantis are going to be able to kill off those engineers before the point defense is built, and that expansion is probably going to go down. I do see a potential issue, though. Um, there are now less tanks on No Joke's side, and he is overextended to the south. Should Super choose to do so, he could push up through that base, and that could potentially be terrible. I'll have to see if he actually does it. On about the map, Balvary Mountains. There are reclaimable rocks off on the edges. Good lord, that's a terrible texture. Wow. I wonder if somebody meant to put reclaimable rocks down there. So there's large boulders in the back. There are small rocks and trees scattered around the map. You can see some of the players have been more diligent about reclaiming them. There's all these little clumps here. There is mass to be had. I know there's only 15 mass extractors on this map, but you can get mass if you need it. And this is exactly what I was afraid of. The ACU has been left in the dust. Two kills off of veterancy. I don't think it's in any danger of dying, although it was in a nice little pincer right down here. If Super had pressed his assault with the ACU versus that lower health commander and then brought in this tremendous group of tanks here, it would have been close. I think the base was the right call because that ACU, I don't know if he knew how close it was to veterancy, but the vet probably, probably would have saved that commander. And as things stand, this is terrible. Down to three mass income, only one mass extractor left. Point defense doing work on those tanks, but not till the damage is already done. There go the last of the tanks to those Medusas. There's a T2HQ online. Kudos on moving for the tech, but 
Ugh. Bad timing. That explains why No Joke went from vastly superior numbers to not enough tanks all of a sudden. Because when you go to that T2 HQ, it puts a screeching halt to your unit production in a lot of regards. And uh, you end up with a couple of T2 units and not enough T1s. There is a definite transition phase where you don't have enough units to cover all of your bases. And we just saw that in probably its most destructive form for no joke. All those Thams got around the outside edge and he lost his entire base. But he's sticking with it. Kudos to you, good sir, for staying in the game. I know there's a lot of people that quit out of situations like that, but uh, he is going to put up a fight still. Super on 1900 reclaim, no joke on 2100, so still relatively, relatively close, but now it favors no joke, and no joke does have a buttload of tanks to reclaim in his base. That's the one good thing about having your base destroyed. You end up with a lot of wreckage afterward to eat for income. We got a T... I thought I saw... Yeah, there we go. T2 Engineer out. And now we have shifted to Rhinos. Rhinos are going to work pretty well versus T1, but the problem is Super is going for a T2 factory himself with far superior income numbers. 25 mass per tick versus 9 with 100 more power. He is going to be able to push a fairly substantial number of Ilshavas, although he is going for a T2 Engineer first. And the Ilshavas will trump the Rhinos as long as they're microed correctly. I believe the Ilshavas are slower, but they do have superior range and a greater damage output for slightly more cost if memory serves. So the Ilshavas will be superior in numbers and definitely in range. Just have to see how all of that works out. No joke, moving up once again. He does have that vet on his commander. That is... Um, no, he doesn't. I'm sorry. It's 40 kills for the veteran C, isn't it? I was mistaken. That actually means I need to retract my previous opinion because Super probably could have killed him um, when his ACU was trapped down there between the ACU and all of those units. Working on kill number 30 here. If he can get his ACU situated where it will actually hit something. Yeah, it's 40 kills. Why was I thinking 20? That was stupid. We're now going to start seeing the drastically superior build power of Super Ass coming into play. He's got 75% map control. Slightly inferior numbers, but he will start pushing T2 in just a second, and it will be very dangerous. And it looks like he is getting the gun upgrade. Yes, gun upgrade on his commander, which no joke does not have as of yet. We may be about to see the final push in this. No joke building a T2 mass extractor there and upgrading a second one. I know that he is so low on income at the moment that uh, typically you would say, no, he doesn't have enough to upgrade, but he had mass in storage. He's going to be able to get 75% of that mechs upgrade without stalling, and he needs the income for later. Oh, that's bad. That is very bad. Two T2 bombers coming in. They're going to attack opposite ends of the power generator string, which is an excellent plan, actually, because that means that when one power generator goes, they'll all go due to the chain reaction. Um, this is not going to be pretty. Not going to be pretty at all. No joke, already spamming up additional power in the south as he's watching that go down, and he's going to have to build some T1 mobile anti-air to deal with that. We've got Mantis coming and Engineers coming. Unluckily for him, the Medusas actually took down the anti-air defense down there. Otherwise, these guys would have been in range, although I think that bomber is actually going to dip into the range of the anti-air. Yes, it is, and down it goes. <clears throat> One survivor is going to be more than enough to kill off all of these power generators, though. One bomb right there, and the whole chain goes. Looks like No Joke is going to move back. Let's go ahead and take a look at the reclaim numbers again. 2,700, not much of a change for Super, but holy cow, 5,000 for No Joke. He has now almost doubled his opponent's income from reclaim, and that's going to be the only thing keeping him in this game. Second T2 Mass Extractor online. He's actually starting to build Cerberus turrets. 
Definitely a defensive posture if I've ever seen one. You don't often see a Cybern Turtle, but in this case, I don't think he's got any choice at all in the matter. Finally got that veterancy on his commander. 33 kills to get it. He must have overcharged an Ilshiva at some point to get that extra bump. Unless I'm just reading the stats wrong on the ACU. Sometimes I wonder about my brain. I really do. Things are looking relatively good for No Joke now, actually. He does have radar up. He's got his power back online. Second Cerberus turret going down. He's got a halfway decent number of Mantis and a couple of Rhinos behind him. I think Super has a superior force, though. There's two Elshivas moving towards the front. He's getting T2 Mass Extractor upgrades as well. And more Thams on the south side. And now that gun upgraded commander. We're going to have to see how this goes. There's no gun upgrade on this one, remember. So he's going to have major, major issues dealing with that. Why are you building a second radar? You don't have the mass to be wasting on this kind of thing. I don't understand. I really, really don't understand. The final T2 Mass Extractor upgrade going down. <clears throat> and it is complete. And he is going to start the gun upgrade. Good for you. Maybe you'll get it done in time. The ACU is approaching. If I were you, I would put all available build power on that ACU. Because you have got to get that gun upgrade done or you are dead. 380 power income. 480 when he's reclaiming trees. That is not enough power to be pushing all of this stuff. It's enough power to build off of these few land factories, but you can see his radar stalling out. He's got no intel, got no air factory, and life is about to get very complicated for him. A second Cerberus is up and a third is going down under a single engineer's build power. He is trying to get that upgrade done. Super is about to close range. If I were Super in this situation, I would force fire No Joke with everything that I had because I think there is no way that No Joke could survive. He is going to soak about 3,000 damage before that upgrade is finished, possibly more. And it's just not a good situation to be in. He's got a couple of Ilshivas in here to provide damage. The only thing left is these Cerberus turrets and a small handful of Mantis. No joke, picked up the Veterancy. It's only a thousand extra health, but it does make a difference. And now Super is going to close in on the base, hammering down those Cerberus turrets, and that is going to be the end of them. No joke, still valiantly defending it. The targeting priorities are on other matters than his ACU. And this I don't understand. Super with a whopping 10,000 health on his ACU and the gun upgrade versus a half health ACU and no forces is pulling back. I understand playing cautiously, but that just... Wow. Why? There was no reason to pull back from that. No joke should be dead right now. Speaking of intel... Let's take a look. Ah, it is scouted. Good dealio. So, Super has pinged scouts across relatively recently because we've got all the T2 mass extractors scouted. So that is good, good, good. He is ferociously massed all though. 69 in the hole. 42 income. That means he's like 150% stalled. Well, not anymore. 37. So, 100%. 100% past stalled. Still bad. And throwing up a T2 power generator. Looks like he's going to continue to scale. I don't understand some of the choices that have been made here. But, uh, yeah, it is what it is. And you carry on and try not to beat yourself in the head over it. That's going to be the stealth upgrade. It's like a super cheap, super early shield upgrade, but not really. It doesn't add any extra health, but it does give you the ability to outrange a lot of things. With that gun upgrade, you can range T2 point defense. The T2 point defense can't hit you as long as you fire from maximum reach. Nothing can hit you if there isn't intel on your commander. It does not show up as a radar blip. You actually have to have eyes on, which greatly increases the damage potential of the Cybern ACU. 
it is absolutely a paper upgrade and not incredibly useful later on in the game but in the t1 and early t2 phases i think the stealth upgrade is a critical part of the cybern strategy got those three rhinos moving in again trying to harass this point going to take out one mass extractor and then fall back <clears throat> taking out a handful of t1 tanks on their way out not a bad little raid if i do say so myself two hoplites out that's going to be a useful tool versus the Ilshavas. Those guys will be able to lay down large amounts of damage from range. The Alpha is so high on those. We've got another upgrade going down for Super. That is going to be the T2. So we're going to have T2 and Gun versus Stealth and Gun. Classic matchup if ever I have seen one. And those artillery wandered too close. Got to target those point defense from max range so you don't wander in and get dead. T2 upgrade is going down at a furious pace for Super. Let's see what he's going to do. Probably T2 point defense. There's the radar. There's the point defense. Looks like he is going to keep his stranglehold on both of these expansions. So his eco is going to stay up. Whopping 50 versus 25. And no joke is going to be forced back because... Those T2 point defense are going to start firing on him as soon as vision contact is made. So nice little defensive position there for Super. He's going to be able to hold that gap no problemo. Beautiful little engagement down here. I think Blue is going to run away the winner though because he has a couple of Ilshivas in there and a lot of T1 tanks. The Rhinos are moving outside range. All the Ilshivas have to do is kite and they will auto win, but no, the Ilshivas are closing into range with the Rhinos, which eliminates that one advantage that they have, and, uh, well, there's still enough, I think. There's another group moving down, Hoplite in the mix as well. The damage is tallying, and Red's gonna walk away the winner. That is a surprise. If those Ilshivas had been microed a little bit better, I think that would have ended up differently. But as things stand, Red is victorious on the bottom corner. Going to kill off that last Ilshavo at the sacrifice of a Rhino. And that is GG for that corner. No joke's got to back up, though. Four T2 point defense firing at him. Oh, no! 500 and a vet! That vet saved his life. No doubt about it. Seraphim point defense put out an absolutely brutal amount of damage. Far more than the Cybern or UEF point defense put out. And that is cheese I smell in the corner. I can't blame him though. No joke has been playing basically a survival game this entire time. <clears throat> T2 power generator and all the mechs are behind two TAC defense, which is going to be enough to stop um, one TAC missile completely. Two launched might, or all three launched at the same time might be able to snipe the T2 power. ACU moving back in, but he's going to have to back off as soon as that point defense starts firing. There's the point defense. Oh, well, he has stealth. So, he has to be scouted first. Alrighty then. Got four T2 mass extractors up there. Let's take a look at the reclaim numbers real quick. 3,800 for super and 10,500. Nearly triple or no attack. joke. And there we go. Line of sight with the Ilshiva on that ACU and the point defense starts firing. What you got to do? Get in range. Tack missile going down. Is there? Yes, there's tack defense. So no worries at all. Defense is there. That missile will not be able to do a dang thing. Looks like we have all available mass and build power going to those launchers which have not been scouted by Super. That is dangerous. We may be seeing what ends the game here. Not entirely sure. Two Ilshivas coming in versus two Rhinos. It's going to be a victory for the Ilshivas, no doubt about it. Nice scouting from No Joke, but no intel being gathered by Super, which is also going to lead to him wasting TAC missiles because he doesn't have that TMD scouted which is going to casually slaughter any attack missiles that pass over. All right. T2 shield going down. Well, that will save him. He's not going to have any problem. He's got 1k power. In oh. He is power stalled. Not good. 
Well, if he balances, he'll be fine. Looks like we have loaded chambers on that. There's the launch, but shield is up. Super is power stalled. No, 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 no. Started building the T2P gen and hard stalled. Shield is down. Ah, no. How could you? The cheese, the cheese gives me heartburn. Ah, ah. Well, it's a valid tactic. It was not scouted, it was not prevented. And lack of balanced eco meant a power stall, which meant the shield went down. It was unfortunate the amount of luck that went into that, but kudos to No Joke for surviving two separate base demolitions, zero map control, and multiple attacks, nearly killing his ACU, and still coming back to win that with attack launch. I will say to Super, man, I really hope you press your advantages a little better. A couple of different choices on your firing would have clinched that for you. Alrighty, guys, I'm going to wrap up that replay here. That I hope you guys enjoyed the game. I'm going to get out of here. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.